If you think that the only way you can enjoy a delicious homemade latte is by owning a fancy espresso machine, then think again. Today I'm going to be sharing four different ways that you can make approximately espresso strength coffee with affordable, non-bulky gadgets, plus one method that requires absolutely zero equipment. I'll go over the pros and cons of each method, plus I'll let you know which one I think makes the best espresso. Okay, the first method uses a French press. It's pretty easy to make espresso strength coffee with one of these, but you do need to follow these steps carefully in order to avoid off flavors or bland tasting coffee. Start with quarter ground dark roast coffee. Place one quarter cup in the canister of a French press. Yes, this seems like a lot of coffee, but it's needed for that strong espresso flavor. The amount of water you need will vary based on the size of your French press. If you're using a small French press, use three ounces of water, and if you're using a large French press, use four ounces of water. Okay, pour three to four ounces of 190 degree Fahrenheit or 87 degrees Celsius water on top of the grounds. You don't want to use boiling water or the flavors can get off. 190 is just right. Stir the water and grounds together with a spoon until everything is evenly moistened. Put the lid on top of the French press and let it stand for four minutes. Plunge the French press down and pour the coffee out into your mug. Add sweetener if desired and pour some froth milk on top to make a delicious homemade latte. The advantage to this method is French presses are very easy to find in stores. Plus, they're multi-purpose. You can use them to make regular strength coffee, make cold brew, or even frothy milk. The disadvantage to me is that the coffee isn't quite as flavorful as this next method, which uses this little gadget called an AeroPress. It's a plastic chamber that has another smaller plastic chamber that you use to plunge down and extract the espresso. Okay, to make espresso strength coffee in an AeroPress, start by dampening the paper filter and placing it in the filter basket. Screw the basket onto the chamber of the AeroPress. Place it over your mug. Put one quarter cup plus one tablespoon of finely ground dark roast coffee into the chamber of the AeroPress. Pour two and a half ounces of 175 degree Fahrenheit or 79 degrees Celsius water over the grounds in the chamber. Again, don't use boiling water here. Stir with the provided stir stick. Now take the second chamber and plunge the AeroPress down pressing the plunger all the way down to the grounds. Sweeten and top with frothed milk if desired. Now the advantage of this method is that it makes excellent coffee. I think it's closest to the taste of real espresso of these four methods. But some of the disadvantages are it uses paper filters that you have to replace once you use them up. It's made of plastic, which can be a cause for worry for some people. And it requires quite a bit of strength to plunge down, so it's not great for people with low strength. If you're a complete minimalist and you don't want to own any extra equipment, then this next method is for you. You simply make instant coffee at a very concentrated strength to approximate that espresso flavor. I recommend investing in a high quality instant coffee because you'll be able to taste it really well since it's so concentrated. I like the Mount Hagen, Four Sigmatic, and Thrive Market instant coffees, which I'll have linked down below. Okay, to make the espresso, simply mix together two to three teaspoons of instant coffee with two tablespoons of hot water. This will make about one shot of espresso, so double this if you wanna make two shots. I like about five teaspoons of instant coffee to one quarter cup of hot water to make two shots. And that's it, so simple. Sweeten to taste and top with frothed milk if desired. The obvious advantage to this method is that it requires zero equipment. And the obvious disadvantage is that you can sacrifice flavor for ease of preparation. However, if you buy a high quality instant coffee, it can come pretty dang close to the other three methods. And lastly, we have the mocha pot. Isn't this just the cutest little coffee maker? This one is made by Bialetti. It's an older model, so I'm not sure if it's sold anymore, but I'll link a similar one down below. This is the smallest size and it's great for making one double shot latte. This uses a stovetop percolation method for extracting the coffee. This requires a little more attention than the other methods, but it is fairly simple to use once you learn how to do it. But again, you must follow my steps carefully in order to get great taste tasting coffee from it. Start by filling the bottom chamber of the mocha pot with boiling water to just below the valve. Fill the funnel with finely ground dark roast coffee and level off the top. Place over the chamber and make sure to clean any grounds off of the rim. Otherwise you'll have trouble when you're screwing on the top part. Speaking of which, firmly screw the top part of the mocha pot onto the bottom chamber. Don't use the handle to wrench on it though. Place the mocha pot on your stove and set the flame so that it isn't larger than the bottom of the mocha pot. If you use an electric stovetop, make sure to use a small circle hot area thingy. I don't use electric, so I don't know what that's called. If you use a flame or a circle that's too big, it could make the handle too hot. Now wait until the coffee starts percolating into the top part of the mocha pot. When it's about a third or halfway full, close the lid and remove from heat. Wrap in a dish towel and allow it to sit until you hear a hissing sound or the coffee stops coming out of the top. If you only get a tiny amount of coffee in the upper part, you need to put it back on the stove for a bit to encourage it to percolate more. Give the coffee a little stir with a chopstick and then immediately pour out into your mug. 
If you brew with care, this really does make some nice coffee. The design is lovely, and the pot that I own is stainless steel, which I really like. The downside of this method is that it's a little more involved and requires precision because it's a little finicky. Plus, it takes a little more time to brew than the AeroPress method, and obviously a lot more time than the instant coffee method. I would say the flavor isn't quite as good as the AeroPress method. It's about the same as the French press method. Now, which one of these methods is my personal favorite? I'd have to say that of the four, the AeroPress is my favorite. I just haven't had a non-espresso machine espresso that tastes better. If you're planning on making cold brew as well, the French press is probably the best option. And if you don't want to have to deal with grinders or extra coffee equipment, then the instant coffee method is for you. The mocha pot is really a lovely little machine, and if you're willing to put in the work to perfect the method, it can be quite rewarding. Now the next step you must learn to achieve a really amazing latte at home is how to froth milk without a machine. And to learn eight different ways to do that, make sure to check out this video next. Now the and to learn eight different in order to avoid, uh, avoid.